Ah, okay, let's get it unboxed. So shout out to the guys at Parasound for sending this out, for sending this out to, for me to check out. Pretty nicely packed. Inside we get a little accessories box. We have a little trigger cable. We get some screws, power cord, and the rack mount. Here's the warranty information. Here's the owner's guide. So this comes in a nice little cloth bag. Keeps it from getting scratched up during shipping. The good thing about this is, let me spin this around. There's actually built-in handles here. So it's left and right handles. So if you are picking it up, you can actually just grab it by here and just do that instead of trying to deadlift it like I did. But since we're around back, you do get the handles. Connection-wise, we get your gain controls. You get your RCA unbalance inputs. Looks like there's a little loop output here. I'm not exactly sure how that works, so I'm gonna have to check that out later. We have the unbalanced, balanced switch. Here's your XLR ins. Here's the bridge mono. So you can use this as a mono amplifier if you want to. Power rating wise, if you want to use it as a mono amplifier, it's 1200 watts into eight ohms. You're not supposed to use this with four ohm speakers, so it's gotta be, so if you're gonna use it as mono, it's gotta be eight ohm speakers only. But it's 400 watts per channel into eight ohms or 600 watts into four ohms. Of course, this is a stereo amplifier. It's a class A, A, B amp. You get the same connections on the opposite side. And then here you have some, your, some trigger options as well. You get your turn on signal sensing. You can choose between quieter or louder, so sensitivity. Or if you wanna do your standard 3.5 mil trigger cable, you can do that right there as well. And here are your binding posts for your speaker connectors. These have a pretty nice grip so you can get a hold of it, put some spades in there or your bananas or bare wire and get that locked down pretty tight. And then on the opposite side here, you get your fuse, replaceable fuse, main power switch, and then your AC inlet. Now if we take a look at the build quality, you can see on each side it has some really nice heat sinks, very big and robust heat sinks on both sides and on the front. Not much going on up here. You get John Curl's signature engraved on the front there, Parasound logo, stereo amplifier, power on off switch, and then you get an LED indicator on the opposite side. And then there's a little, little call out badge that says JC5 to let you know what model it is. Now, if you are gonna place this in your rack, it's pretty big. Size wise, it's 17 inches wide, which is your standard AV equipment width. It is 20 inches deep. So this is a deep boy right here, very deep and it's uh, roughly about seven and a half, eight inches tall. So standard 17 inches wide, but it is a very deep amplifier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up. So for setup, we've got the JC5 hooked up to a pair of 805D4s. For cabling, we've got a pair of Kimber cable. And for sources, we're gonna be using Rune with Cobuzz and Tidal playing through a Cambridge Edge and Q. We're also gonna be using a pair of Cambridge Edge mono blocks as a comparison piece to the JC5. This is not a versus battle between the Parasound or the Cambridge, but we just wanted to have a control piece, which is gonna be our Cambridge mono blocks. First thoughts, Bill, what'd you think? Um, I think the JC5 did a great job when you're comparing it to a pair of mono blocks, them being, those being the uh, gold standard for stereo amplification, they really did a nice job Great punchy low end, nice high end. With the variety of songs we use, you know, you get a good flavor for either one of those. Some of the things we especially choose for their high ends to see if you're gonna really, you know, uh, make some grating sort of uh, unpleasant high end sounds and it did really well against that, the mono blocks. First off, the Cambridge Edge is 200 watts per channel and the JC5 is 400 watts per channel. Right. So it has kind of doubled the power. The first thing that we noticed is after swapping speaker cables and connectors, the XLR cables, uh, we did notice a significant increase in loudness once we went from the Cambridge over to the JC5. So the JC5 is definitely more powerful. And to do the uh, demonstration, to do the uh, demos, we actually had to level match each one of them. And just like, as Bill, just like Bill said, the first thing I noticed was 
the extra mid-range punch and, and bassiness that we got from the JC5. I don't know if it's because there's just more juice to it, but after level matching, we did notice more heft in the bass and in the mid-range region. And because these, uh, I think these, this is one of those few tower speakers that we have with actual mid-range drivers in them. It's very the, nice, big mid-range drivers. Nice mid-range drivers. <laughs> and the JC5 really pushed the mid-range and it was just so, so, I think we we're listening to um, the Dominique song and there's a lot of, a lot of mid-range heft in that song. Mm -hmm. At least, I didn't think so. At least all the other times that we've heard it on different speakers. But uh, I think before this, we went, we listened to the, to the Prolicens and that had mid-range drivers in it as well. Yeah. They're not Several. quite as yeah, not quite as uh, throaty sounding as the Bowers and Wilkins. Uh, not not that we compared them, but I, this one thing I did notice with the Bowers and Wilkins and the JC5, I noticed a lack of that mid range with the Cambridge Edge. The the the, the Cambridge the monoblocks are more balanced in terms of, I think they're the power is more equally distributed. I don't know really how they how that's done or, you know, we're not driving either one of these amps to a clipping, you know, to outside their performance range. They have slightly different characteristics and I think the Cambridge is more even sounding, you know, from the high end to the low end, whereas these the JC5 is much more present in the mid-range and low end. Low end. Uh, when I was listening to some hip hop and pop rap music, it sounded better with the JC5s. But yes, I, I do feel like the mono blocks, the Cambridge, more of a well-balanced sound across the entire spectrum. So maybe smoother sounding across the board. I found so that the one song we always listen to for live performance, the um, the Sweet Jane, Cowboy Junkies, I prefer the mono blocks to that because of that balanced sound. I think it retains the characteristic of the space um, a little bit clearer than the JC5. But um, you know that's just my ears and it's very subjective. That's not something that's probably you know, super measurable. I'm also wondering if it's because of the mono block architecture. Maybe we're hearing cleaner. Cleaner separation. I felt there was. A, I did feel the Cambridge was a little cleaner sounding. Uh, again, I, that's one of the one of the whole things about having mono block is the mm -hmm. fact that you've got your power sources are separate, complete separate units. Whereas, you know, 400 watts per channel. That's a lot of power, and especially it's a lot of power to have in one cabin. I don't care how how well you isolate the channels. That's you know there's the potential for, you know, a bit of distortion there. Now, Parasound does make a mono block as well. I think it's the JC One Plus. That might have been a more even comparison with the Cambridge, mm -hmm. but as it is, we only had the two channel all in one chassis, so we can't compare that, at least not yet, Parasound. You can always send that over. <laughs> Please. As far as like imaging and separation, everything like that, I mean, I thought imaging was fantastic, especially with the Dominique song that we heard. Mm -hmm. She, I would say that I think, I think between the two, I, I felt like the Cambridge was a little bit more reserved. I thought her vocals were a little bit more laid back, but at the same time for the JC5, I thought it was a little bit more forward for, than the Cambridge, but I did find like the instruments floated, almost like had a holographic presence, especially with these speakers and the JC5. So I did like that. The Cowboy Junkie song, there's a part during the beginning where I don't know what the, the lead singer song is, but she's singing. It's kind of a breathy, kind of a soft. Sweet Jane. Yeah, Sweet Jane. And uh, then the, the the guy comes in. He's over on the left hand speaker, and he he kind of floats. He floats between the center. That slide and the guitar. Left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can hear you can hear the kind of finger going across it as well. So good microdynamics and detail with the JC5. I did notice a very clean, present amount of detail in the upper end. Not harsh, as you were saying earlier. I didn't feel like anything was harsh. No, not at all. As far as being like sibilant and whatnot. Um, I heard, I've heard other apps that can come across as a little bit more sharper sounding, but I felt that it handled the sibilancy very good with the JC5. Yeah, uh, that was one thing I noticed. I think the JC5 had a lot more lower end and a lot more mid range, which is why you may have heard some of those characteristics, especially with her voice being more forward. Um, yeah, because when she says sweet Jane, the, she really oh, yeah. emphasizes the sweet and uh, it sounded really good with, yeah. the, with the sample. But um, the Cambridge gives a more natural sound in terms of the, the live presence. The imaging I thought was great on both amps. I didn't really find much difference other than the, the, the sound of the space with the sweet Jane. The Dominique sound was great. Like all, the, all, the, all the instruments uh, and her, her location are very similar, I think, in, in, you know, from my hearing um, in both, with both amps. 
I think with that heavier mid-range and uh, lower end bass extension with the JC5, mm. I thought it, it, was, it sounded a bit more, I guess you could say more dynamic sounding. Uh, it's definitely that yeah. J, the the JC5 is definitely punchy. I mean, it's got a lot of a lot of nice low end and mid range. I listened to that Dominique. I kept going back to the beginning just to listen to that kick when it first came in because it really, you know, it really snapped. And especially for like pop songs, like I said, pop songs, rap songs. Listen, I like I like a lot of rap and a lot of rap and pop. And uh, I know he likes Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez. <laughs> but listen, if yeah, you, if you like rock, <laughs> pop, something with like just a lot of heavy bass in it, JC5 really kicks. And that's where I felt like the uh, the Cambridge Edge fell a little short of the JC5. Imaging and everything like that, like we were saying, still good instrumental separation. We're, we're hearing really good microdynamics placement within the soundstage up front. Like I said, I felt it was a little bit more forward than the Cambridge. Still, still a little recessed if we we're measuring from the front of the tweeter, from the front of the speaker. Still a little bit behind that, but I felt it was a little bit more forward than the Cambridge. But I could still hear every instrument placed on the soundstage. And every singer, backup sing, background singer, very dimensional. There's that the kick drum in the Dominique song where you, you can hear it kind of like, mm -hmm. like several you feet can behind, hear it behind it. Yeah. yeah. So I liked how that reproduced that as well. Overall, I just think it's a it's a definitely a solid, solid amplifier. No, absolutely. Uh, I think again, we're not comparing the same power. We're not we going to compare some, but for power for power, you know that thing does have more presence, and I think that. A certain amount of that is done is due to the, the power uh, of the JC5. All right, so at the time of this video, the JC5 is $6,000. We are comparing it to the Cambridge Edge, which is $4,000 a piece, so it's a little bit more money for the monoblock setup. Yep, um, I think the construction, uh, the separate amplification does factor into maybe some distortion effects, uh, certain characteristics. And then you have the JC5, which is, you know, clearly just more powerful. And that may factor into some of the more punchy bass and mid-range. But I think they both did a fantastic job. And the JC5, for the price, very, very good choice for an amplifier. I don't know they make several models of the Parasound amp, so if you wanted to put this in your, like, your home theater, you can definitely do that. This is the two-channel model. I think they make like a three-channel and like a five-channel version. So I could see this if you're going to use it in either a two-channel kind of like audiophile-esque setup or an audiophile-esque home theater setup. I mean, you can pair this with multi-channel amps or just use it on its own. I think it's a great choice if you want to use this for tower speakers or bookshelf speakers because we crank these, uh, these, uh, these towers up like hardcore and this thing never ran out of steam. Yeah, I mean, we turned it up and like I said, we never drove it to a clipping state, so we never got it to distort, uh, and it sounded, it definitely held its own, especially with, you know, these these Bowers Towers are, you know, they can take a lot of juice. Uh, I can imagine at a really, you know, major home theater setup with the five channel, you'd probably, you know, have a good time without having to deal with that kind of issue. Anyways, guys, that's our thoughts on the Parasound JC5 two channel amplifier. Have you guys heard it? What'd you think of the sound quality? Let us know down below in the comments. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next video. Peace.